And I know you and I have chatted a couple of times about animal therapies and just how effective they can be for some people. Now, out at Euroa Horse Park, they're really keen to promote the work that they've been doing and what can be done with animal therapies. They're actually running some workshops. We're going to talk to Euroa Horse Park in just a moment or two, but to get a bit of a background on how all of this works, Wendy Coombe is the founder of Animal Therapies. And Wendy, good morning to you. Good morning, Nick. What what do we mean? Oh, it's a bit of a catch-all term, but when we say animal therapies, what are we talking about? Yeah, and it's really important to understand the qualification of the human that's delivering the animal assisted therapy. So there are a variety of uh, very highly um, qualified professionals working alongside animals across Australia, and they're working within the scope of their practice. Um, helping their clients. Uh, Obviously, they've got specific demographics that they're working with and client populations and client needs and the animals that they work alongside uh, have been chosen based on the suitability. So obviously, the animals need to be safe to the client Mm. and the animals also need to be wanting to do the work. Right. So they've got to be kind of, uh, how do I put it, like almost active participants in it. Oh, absolutely. The animals always should have agency and Part of our role um, as a health promotion charity is not only to educate uh, policymakers, the public, um, about the different types of animal assisted services, but also to make sure there's standards and ethics across the sector. So, um, particularly in terms of animal wellbeing and particularly in, in terms of safety to humans. And look at Wendy, I know there's been a lot of focus on what animal therapy can do on a psychological level, but physiologically, there can be a huge benefit as well. Oh, absolutely. Mm. So there's hippotherapy. I mean, most animal-assisted therapy or equine-assisted therapy is uh, delivered on the ground. So it may involve the um, health professional working with a client alongside a horse, and often that horse will pick up um, non-verbal messages (coughs) that their client might be experiencing um, or thinking and that allows the health professional to unpack whatever is going on to the client at the time because the horse is actually telling the health professional what the client's um, emotional regulation is is doing at that time. But then you've got things like hypotherapy where you might have a, a, a a physiotherapist or speech therapist or occupational therapist that has a client on the back of a horse because the, yeah, because the movement of the horse, um, can actually help with uh, their, their their actual therapy goals. And uh, the interesting thing too is there's actually an organisation that delivers the school curriculum to children with additional needs on horseback because there's evidence to say that, you know, when you're actually moving and bringing both sides of the brain into the learning process, it's more effective. So... There you go. We shouldn't be sitting at a desk. No, we shouldn't be. Wendy, you've actually <laughs> blown my mind a bit here, and I wish I could uh, keep you on the line and, and keep chatting because um, it's absolutely fascinating. I'd love to learn more about your space, but I am acutely aware that we are running up towards the 8 o'clock news, and I do want to chat quickly, pardon me, sorry, to Vanessa Hawkins, who's actually the owner of the Euroa Horse Park, also a registered nurse, as I understand. Vanessa, good morning to you. Good morning, Nick. Tell me about the work you're doing out at Euroa Horse Park. Oh, look, it's wide and varied and, and it's um, exciting to see the emergence of uh, the animal-assisted services um, becoming a very key part of what we do here. And it's sort of almost organically grown from clients coming and connecting with not just the horses but the cattle as well. That's been something of a real surprise to me and, and incredibly moving Um And I just really am keen to sort of spread the word and let people know about the benefits of um, working with animals in in a whole range of different fields. I know you're running a couple of workshops. I've got some dates and I'll talk about that in just a second. But the cattle one did surprise me. You don't hear them come up a lot as a sort of an animal involved in this. No, and it surprised me enormously too. I mean, I grew up mustering them um, (laughs) and, you know, driving them through yards. But now that I've had clients here actually just sit peacefully with them and be part of that, accepted as part of that herd, and the challenge that the client faces is gaining that animal's trust. Mm. Um, And and the outcomes of that are huge because... um, 
you know, it really does build confidence and awareness in ourselves when we're challenged with that. Um, and that the process encourages us to seek a relationship with, with the animal, whichever it is, and then helps us to gain better control and understanding of our words, our emotions and our actions. Um, so the animals actually divert the attention away from us and that in itself is cathartic for the body, mind and soul and healing for so many people. Vanessa, it must be fascinating for you to look at it both as someone who works with animals and, and someone coming from a medical background. But yes. before we run out of time, for the workshops, you've got one on this Saturday. You're doing another one on November 25. What are people... 